What's going on Internet IG here again today with another Linux distro review and a new haircut. Today we're going to be having a look at Linux Mint 15. So it's that time of the year again when all of the Linux distributions come out to play and most of them yes being based on Ubuntu the primary of which would be Linux Mint. Now for the last couple of releases there have been two main editions that are released with each new release of Linux Mint. The Mate edition and the Cinnamon edition. Primarily I've used the Cinnamon edition but I've also had a little bit of experience with the Mate one. So with the recent drop of Linux Mint 15 I'm going to be having a bit of a look at both just to see what the improvements are and what you're going to notice if you decide to run this system as your daily driver. As per usual, they're generally worth checking out. So let's have a look at what some of the changes are, shall we? So the first thing that you're going to notice with this recent release of Linux Mint 15, in the Cinnamon edition especially, is the Mint Login Manager or Mint Display Manager, MDM. It's gotten a nice refresh here, so we have some nice themes available, and it also has a new backend as well. You can have Login or Display Manager themes now based on either the GTK greeter, like the GNOME 2 release that you could theme, but they've also developed a new HTML greeter and now this theme supports a heap of animations and cool JavaScripty stuff so people are gonna be able to have fun customizing their login screen you get past the layer of the login screen and you are met with a familiar Linux Mint cinnamon desktop now of course the only difference between the two main editions is the desktop manager and this one is the cinnamon release we're gonna be having a look at the mate one in just a sec but Cinnamon 1.8 has a bunch of improvements as per usual for each Linux Mint release. Just to start out with, we've got some nice polish on the desktop with the addition of desklets. Basically, these are like little widgets that you can throw onto the desktop and drag them around. So they're a bit like widgets on the KDE desktop, which is pretty cool. There's also a new lock screen now. So that when you log out and lock the screen, you can type in an away message that if you're going to be leaving the computer and you want to tell somebody else that you've gone out to lunch, you can say, I'm out for lunch and then it will lock the screen and put the quote and your username on the screen there. Now the next thing that I'm very happy to see is a unified control center. But to be honest, the, it was getting a little bit messy having cinnamon settings and system settings in separate categories, whereas now we have them all under the one system settings window and we've got nice inline search here highlighted by default. So if you're looking for a particular option, you can simply type to find it. And there's also two different settings inside this settings manager. Now, why is that a bit confusing? Well, basically it's so that you can have a simple layout with the simple settings that you're gonna be using most often. Then if you switch to advanced mode, it brings in everything that uh, anybody would ever wanna use. And some of this stuff new users are gonna be daunted by. So they trimmed it down to just the simple settings. Backgrounds, fonts, etc. You can see preferences here is what the cinnamon settings used to be, along with a few GNOME settings as well. So it's great to see you still have all of the fantastic features of cinnamon here integrated into the system settings, such as applets, calendar, what you want on your panel, and all of that fun stuff. As you can see here on the bottom, we also have those controls still for switching windows. So if you have multiple windows open, you can present them in a nice list here and switch between them that way. Or you can also bump your mouse up to the top left-hand corner and it will zoom out to workspace view. Now you can see the animations are a little bit choppy because I am using it inside a virtual box, but on native hardware it works very smoothly. I've tested it and it's perfect. Apparently there is also a new improvement with the render detection so that if you don't have the right kind of hardware out of the box, if Linux Mint doesn't, doesn't support it, it will do its best to support the graphics as far as giving you some nice effects. But then when you do install the right graphics drivers, then the better effects will kick in. And then of course the drivers brings us to the next point of call and that would be the driver utility. So Linux Mint developed a new driver manager in an effort to eliminate the ambiguity surrounding the little driver utility that Ubuntu used to use. This one has a lot more specificity as far as what version of the driver you're using and what are available. So if, for instance, I had an NVIDIA card, it would give me all the different options of all the different NVIDIA graphics cards that are available for that particular card. I'd be able to choose the most recent one or a stable one depending on my needs. So it's much more detailed and much easier to know which one to choose. Also, one thing that I did fail to mention inside the system settings is a new spices management. Now, basically spices are little things that you can add on to cinnamon to make it more interesting. So as you can see here, you can see the ones that are enabled and the ones that are locked to the panel, etc. And if you want to get more, you can simply add more by getting more online directly inside this system preferences window. So it's very nice indeed, but unfortunately I'm not connected to the internet, so it's not going to work for me this time around. Once again, it's worth mentioning, fantastic selection of backgrounds, it's really enough said. 
For the last few releases, they've had some great photos contributed by the community. And finally, we do have a few improvements with the Nemo file manager. Basically, they've retained a lot of the same features that Nautilus file browser had. They've just made a few improvements here to the overall look and feel of the file manager, as well as giving it some nice old school functionality like tree based navigation or the classic bookmark view. It's very solid, very stable, and it looks very polished. So as you can see here, we have the Mate edition of Linux Mint running right now. So Linux Mint 15, what does it bring to the table with the Mate edition? Well, it's running Mate 1.6, which means we do have quite a few bug fixes on the back end. Not stuff that you're gonna see at the face level, but you are definitely going to notice the changes once you start playing around with it. For me, I always played around with the Mate edition when it came out, but I never really saw it as that important, simply because I, I noticed it to be a little bit buggy, a little bit crashy, and also it didn't really look quite right compared to the Linux Mint that I remember when I was introduced to it right back in Linux Mint 8. But here we are in version 15 with Mate 1.6, and it's actually looking pretty nice. Now, of course, this is the GNOME 2 fork, so there are a lot of older technologies here making their appearance as rejuvenated plastic surgenated programs, which can be a good or bad thing, depending on which camp you come from. But probably my favorite feature by far is just the fact that you have the Mint menu. I mean, what can I say? This was the menu that won me over when I first started using Linux, and it still is a fantastic menu, mainly because of that inline search where you can install packages, search Wikipedia, Google, and all of that fun stuff. Now, of course, this still has the same basic infrastructure and also Mint tools as the Cinnamon Edition. It just has a different desktop environment and different packages to manage all that desktop type stuff. So, for instance, the appearance, backgrounds, etc. are all GTK2, but they are GTK3 compatible. But this desktop environment is great for older hardware because it's been around for that much longer and has had that much longer to mature. Now, there have been some nice improvements here on Kaja or Kaja, the file browser. And they've been working on this independently for quite some time now, as well as forking the more recent GNOME um, file manager, which we saw in Cinnamon. It basically still has all the original functionality of the Nautilus of a yesteryear. So it's great to see that that tradition continues. And of course, the ability to just add things to your panel never goes amiss, as this is a feature that many people have longed for in the same simplicity and functionality of GNOME 2. Same basic look and feel, just an older desktop style. And for those who are used to running this desktop, it is a truly great option as it gives you the latest software, but in a desktop layout that makes sense to the traditional desktop user. And with the improvements that they continue to make for the stability and speed of Mate, I can really give it a solid thumbs up and say that I'd be happy to use this on a regular basis, whether or not I would over the more modern desktop environments such as Unity, Cinnamon, Gnome Shell or KDE, I'm not entirely sure, but I definitely feel at home here simply because it's so familiar. Nothing strange or out of the ordinary, and I think that's what Mate brings to the table. More than anything, it's a fantastic that Linux Mint is offering a desktop environment, which is exactly the same as it was back in 2008, except with updated software, updated kernels, updated drivers, the whole works. So congrats on the Mint team for this particular part of the release, because it's also very solid. So what do you guys think of Linux Mint's latest? Is it their best release thus far? Clement Leverfrabler, or however you say that name, the lead developer of Linux Mint, he says that it's the most ambitious release of Linux Mint yet. So what do you guys think? Does this release live up to that title? Let me know in the comments below or on Facebook or Twitter or Google+. They're all links down in the description. Once again, like this video if you did indeed like the video and subscribe if you like this content on a regular basis. And I shall see you all very, very soon with a Magia 3 review. Thanks for the lovin', I shall see you later. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so that is Linux Mint 15, at least in... Okay, so that was a pretty comprehensive look at Linux Mint 15. No. Oh. So what do you guys think? <clears throat> so what do you guys think? Is this Mint's best yet? No. I certainly know I had some issues with all of the Ubuntu-related derivatives around the- Dang it.